Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm just going to tell you a little bit about two optics, a slight comparison. Uh, one here is the Arcan Optics EP5, and then here we have the Discovery Optics EDPRS. Uh, they're both 5 to 25s and have some similarities, but obviously they're going to have some differences. And so I'm going to read off just a few specs uh, from the manufacturer website, the way they are advertising it. Then I'll talk about my experience with the products. And I'm going to start off with the Discovery. So Discovery is sitting on, I suppose I should do this comparison too. It's sitting on a 20 inch CZ457. The, uh, this is the one that comes in the chassis. This one has a triggers by SCAR. It's a triggers by SCAR 55 MOA rail. And this optic works with that 55 MOA rail. They're sitting in Sunway Photo rings and they're both sitting on Sunway Photo tripods, by the way. Atlas, SuperCal bipod. MDT grip, fab defense stock out on the end. And I've been running it kind of like this for a while. If you watch the video that's playing in the background, a little bit of an advertisement for this Discovery 525 uh, PRS. I, I do have a video review about that optic out already. And so you can see a lot more usage of that in that video. Go ahead and watch that. Be entertained. I like this optic a lot. I have good things to say about both of them, but here's the stats. Okay, so it says place of origin is China. Again, the brand is technically Discovery. The model is the EDPRS 5 to 25 by 56 first focal plane. It is illuminated as well. And the field of view, the way that they advertise it, they put degrees on there. And so they put 4.68 to 0 0.93 degrees field of view. That is one way you could talk about field of degrees in view, but the way that we in America measure that if you look at just about every optics manufacturer they're usually going to put uh, the feet or the field of view at uh, 100 yards full magnification or minimum magnification so there's a little difference there in the way that that's advertised it might make it a, a little easier for us americans if it wasn't written out in degrees even though scientifically yes that makes sense and if we all had a better understanding of that if that was the common parlance that we used for talking about field of view at 100 yards on minimum magnification or maximum magnification, uh, degrees would be okay, but it's just not a common way. So feet or measured in inches, feet and inches, getting as close as you can there would be a great way to do it, but they advertise it that way. And everything is gonna be in foreign units of measurement technically to us Americans with this, but uh, it is their standard and it is consistent throughout. I just think they could advertise both you know, the, uh, the foreign uh, system as well as their home system for measurement, uh, degrees, angles, all that kind of thing. The exit pupil diameter is 11.16 uh, to 2.24 millimeters. Again, I have a little bit of an idea about that because I've worked with some metal and oftentimes things are measured in millimeters, uh, pretty often actually when it comes to blade stock thickness uh, for knives and things like that but when it comes to exit pupil diameter sometimes it's just nice to have um, an American metric or a system of measurement next to that but very often exit pupil diameter is discussed in millimeters so that's just one of those confusing things where it's back and forth exit pupil distance is 87 to 85 millimeters again it'd be really nice if it was measured out differently the click value is in tenths milliradian. Okay, so every click is one tenth of a mil or MRAD. Max elevation adjustment. Now, here's where um, there's an error on this. It's advertised as having, um, I don't know how to say it, but on the screen, on the website right here, it says max elevation adjustment range, and then it says MOA, and then it has like a semicolon and then it says 15 MRAD. And so there's some confusion there just for uh, clearing things up in the future for potential customers, whether this is sold on Amazon or directly on the website. It says MOA, and then it says 15 MRAD. Technically, both of those numbers are wrong. So it has more than 15 mils. I'll talk about that more later. But 15 mils would be, let's see, there's 10, there's 15, 10 and five, there's 15. Now it has a lot more than 15 in there and it has a lot, a heck of a lot more than 15 MOA. And so there's a little bit of an error in what's written there. I'm not sure why that is, 
but I was happy to discover that it does have uh, a lot, a lot of internal elevation. But unfortunately, it's written as 15 MRAD. Um, <clears throat> the next measurement on there is for windage, it says 8.7 for uh, windage MRAD. It's more than that. The effective objective lens diameter. I, again, I'm reading it off the website, the way that it's written. And, and there's usually a little bit of a translation issue uh, when you're going from Chinese to English. And so it says effective objective lens diameter. It's a 56 millimeter objective. That's really the best way to say it for all parties involved. Just call it a 56 millimeter objective, um, which that one ironically has 56 millimeter advertised. And then it also says 1.97 inches. So it has an American measurement next to that one, um, as does the next one. The tube diameter is 34 millimeters, and in America, it's just a funny thing. We, we use millimeters when we talk about tube diameters for optics especially, unless it's a one-inch tube, and then we go up to 30 millimeter and we go to 34 millimeter. Um, not sure exactly what the history is on that, but they also put the American measurement of 1.18 inches next to that. The length is 416 millimeters, which is 13 inches. Okay, it's a 13 inch long scope. And then the weight is uh, 1,156 grams or 23.99 ounces. It doesn't have it in pounds, but it does have it in ounces. So some interesting ways to put the information out about this optic. I think that could be cleaned up a little bit from the website. Now let's go over to the stats for the five to 25 from Arkin. Arkin does have uh, a decent description in the way that most people talk about optics on their website. So it's five to 25 field of view. Yeah, that's at 100 yards is 25.3 feet down to 4.9 feet. And so for me being an American, I can read that and really quickly understand, okay, at 100 yards, that's a distance we use a lot like American football, right? At 100 yards, and I can imagine what 25 feet looks like, and I can imagine what roughly five feet looks like. That's easy for me to understand and comprehend quickly when I'm reading that. So it helps me have an idea of how the scope works and compare it against others. Uh, it's a first focal plane as well. It does have a zero reset. They both have a zero reset, but this one is different. All right, uh, adjustment per revolution. Both of these are 10, by the way. They're both 10. And this one is advertised as having 32 mils of elevation and 16 mils of windage. The turret rotation, the way that it twists, is counterclockwise to go up, okay? And the same for the Discovery. They, they go the same way. The weight is 39.2 ounces. This one has the VPR mill reticle, which is something kind of famous to Arkin right now. Again, it's a 34 millimeter, 56 millimeter objective. The eye relief is 3.4 inches. Again, being an American, I can picture that. I can visualize 3.4 inches really quickly. That's easy for me to understand. Uh, the reticle for the uh, Discovery is actually behind me right now. That's what their reticle looks like. It's a little different. It has less holdover in this one, but this one has uh, a bit more, we'll say. Uh, illumination for both of them is, is red, and they both use CR2032 batteries. It comes with a sunshade. This comes with several sunshades that you could customize to different lengths. There's a, a big difference. Both of them have a side parallax. This is important to comment on. Both of them have a side parallax. It goes down to 25 yards. And this information is all present in the Arkin analysis here, um, right on their website. The way they advertise it there, there's pictures and there's a little bit more information. And both of them have additional uh, breakdowns so you can see what else the, the package comes with, which is a good thing. So you know what you're buying when you're getting your eye. I felt the need to go through that information because a lot of people do ask actually on those videos, some of those stats, and that's part of the comparison is just the raw numbers. But now I'm just gonna break it down to the way I feel about the optics, the way I use them, what I've experienced. And I'll start with um, the bell end and then move in. So this is a longer scope. The Discovery is a longer scope than the Arkham. They're both five to 25s. This is a more compact package. There's just no way around it. This is longer, it's 13 inches, and this is uh, shorter than that. Anyways, it's, it's apparent, it's visible with the naked eye. We'll say that for measuring. But they're both 56 millimeter objectives and uh, the Arkin, it does have some cool accessories. The flip caps that you can buy 
from the website. They don't come with the package right when you buy it. The flip caps are very high quality and they work in the winter and they don't break. I'm really happy with these. I'm happy with being able to lay um, that flat as well. That's a big deal to me for whatever reason. I care about that. If I'm going to put flip caps on there, I want them to last and work. And these work really well. The rubber hasn't split. The cold has not you know, been able to destroy these like I, I kind of figured it would, but it didn't. They've held up. So good flip caps so far. These from Discovery um, have been good. And I really should just say this one has been good. The front cap has been good. It does come with a front cover. This is a unique idea. It's kind of a plasticky, rubbery feel, but it's mostly plastic. This is the front cover, front lens cover, eyepiece cover. And it just kind of clips in on top of it. <clears throat> I don't prefer that at all because I can just lose stuff so easily. And if I'm taking a hunting shot or I'm trying to be relatively quick or I'm in a competition, I don't want to be trying to clip this on and off, but at least it comes with something from the factory. And this is the, the pro actually for the discovery, I would say, is it comes with these things. In fact, the discovery comes with everything you, you really need to get it mounted up. It does. It has a lot of stuff in that package. It's a really great value. Um, I just don't like the way this functions. And so if I'm looking for the best option, it's the arcing caps. But if I'm not that interested in spending extra money and I'm mostly concerned with protecting the uh, objective lens, which is a big deal, then uh, this comes with what you need and it's set up and it hasn't broken uh, on me yet in the cold. I mean, it's 12 below out right now when I'm shooting those temperatures and I'm flipping this back and forth at competitions. It's getting bumped around on the racks and stuff. Uh, or in prop stages when I'm shooting NRL 22, it hasn't broken. So I'm, I'm pretty content with that. And it's, uh, I mean, it comes with the package, you know, that's a good deal. I just don't like this one. I like these and the way they function better, but these are extra. You have to pay for that. Is that a problem? You'll have to decide for me. Uh, it's not really a problem at all. I think these are affordable enough, but if I'm feeling lazy, then I, you know, I have something that comes with it already. The sunshade, I don't have sunshades mounted up right now. Part of that is because if I go too long with the sunshade, the angle that I have built into the scope, it's just the way I have my rifle set up with the Discovery, it's not gonna allow, allow for sunshades on here. Uh, it's gonna run into the barrel because I have a 55 MOA rail there and I have a 50 MOA rail here. Again, this is an area 419. I, I maybe didn't describe that very well earlier. I talked about this rifle, but not so much this one. This one's a 16 inch. Uh, this is a 16 inch 457 in the chassis from CZ and it has the area 419 um, tuxedo grip and it also has this fab defense. This is their wrap C carbine stock so it's adjustable and a matador arms side folder which took a little finagling to make that work but it, it, it does work well now especially when I loan this rifle out to my friends we can adjust like the pull which is cool. Atlas bipod and a couple other things, the flashlight, stuff that doesn't matter. This optic uh, also, if I was to extend that out, um, I, I wouldn't have an issue because it sits up just a little higher in the particular rings it's in. But if I had these rings on this rifle, I probably couldn't extend the sunshade quite longer. These rings are just a little taller. They're Sunway photo rings. I'm going to review these soon. And these ones are shorter. So these are lows and these are more like mediums. Both of them are 56 millimeter. Both of them would have a little bit of an issue if I was set into lows, uh, particularly on the 50 and 55 MOA rails. Okay, I know that's a lot of technical stuff, but it's just the way I've set these up and it's my opinion in using them. So I like them. I don't use the sunshades too much, almost never. Uh, in the summertime, it's rarely that bright where I really care a lot about that, but we'll see. Maybe in the future, I'll change my mind. As far as real estate for the rings to sit in, the Discovery has more space. If you need more space to move back and forth and you're trying to get that eye relief set or you need a lot of uh, space up front uh, ahead of the turret, the Discovery has more space, but that also adds to the length of the tube. And so it's a 13 inch optic. Again, this one's shorter. It's a little bit more compact, but you do have less space. So if you were hoping for more real estate, I guess there's an advantage there with the Discovery over the Arkin. If you need a more compact scope, the Arkin has you set there. I had plenty of space to get this on there, even with CZ's um, you know, action and the way this is set up and their limited rail space. They really do have a limited rail space with the dovetail. doesn't give you a lot, but this cantilever is a little bit with Area 419, as well as with the triggers by Scar Rail. allows me to push it out just a little further. 
so I can get good eye relief being 6'5". I, I need more. All right, now I'm gonna to move to the turrets. As far as exterior features go here and things that do something internally, the, the turrets on the Arkin are nice. I, I like them. I've had SH4s. I've already done a comparison against SH4, so I'm not really gonna do that here, but uh, just listen real quick. I like that. There's the zero stop. Really nice turrets. I, I don't know anybody who doesn't like Arkin turrets who shoots often as far as the feel goes. Uh, if they didn't like them, I would love to hear the reason why. Um, maybe, you know, if you want quieter turrets, you don't want it to be real tactile, maybe you wouldn't like that. Some people say that they skip past numbers too easily with the Arkin turrets, that if they're in a competition and they need to race to, let's say, 2.3, I, I just, it wasn't that hard for me to stop on the point three. Some people complain though, and they say that it's, it's uh, too easy to move past those numbers, that the force to exert over it is too much and they're just too tactile. I don't know, in Minnesota, I like that because I can hear it if it's dark out, which I do sh shoot in low light scenarios. I can hear it, I can get a really good feel through my big fat mittens and gloves. I have to shoot with those on because it's so cold. I don't know, I, I don't have any problems with that. That's windage as well as the elevation. They sound the same to me, they function well. I've had no tracking issues at all. Um, I'm gonna talk about this and then I'll talk about the zero stop methods. So the discovery, again, I'm just gonna run this real quick so you can hear the uh, discovery, get my mic closer, you can hear the discovery turrets. There's the zero stop. And the windage is the same as the elevation from what I can tell. Now they have a texture difference. That's the first thing I'm gonna to touch on actually in comparison between these two. Um, the texture on the Discovery I like better than I like the Arkin. The Arkin I like, they're good, they're solid. I don't have a lot of issues with grabbing this. I'm not slipping around on it. Um, none of the Arkin optics I've had have had turret issues really but the Discovery is even more aggressive. It's got these little pyramids kind of built in all the way around, okay? And on both sides, actually every dial or feature or turret on here that you need to grab onto and twist, they all have an appropriate texture for whatever weather conditions you're in. Uh, if it's, your hands are wet or sweaty, everybody always says if their hands are bloody, they need to be able to grab something. I don't know why your hands are bloody, but maybe, uh, if that's the issue for you that you just are worried about wet hands. These are really nice. I like the texture way more on the Discovery than I do on the Arkin, and I do think the Arkin is good. It's just this is solid. doesn't hurt my hands, but man, can I really grab onto it. And it's, uh, it's almost this feeling like there's less force going into the movement of the turret because the turrets are so big. Now, the Arkin turrets are famously pretty big turrets. They're large. And I don't think the force to turn them is really that bad. But because the Discovery turret is actually in diameter, and full diameter, it's bigger. There's more to grab onto. And I would say with that texture, all those things combined, it feels easier to turn. It seems easier. It seems like there's less force there. And at the same time, I don't feel like it's hard to dial, like if I wanna to dial to, let's say 3.8, it's not hard for me to stop on the point eight. It's not hard for me to go back a couple clicks or forward just a couple clicks. Um, like, so, like I said, some people complain about these types of really tactile turrets and they say that it's hard to stop on specific numbers. I don't have that issue. One thing I will say is that these are quieter turrets as far as audibility goes. They're quieter, but I can feel it really well. I would say I feel the stops in, in, and uh, you know, there's a valley and then it, it stops on the next click there. I can feel this better in my hand and through my glove. I can feel it better than the Discovery, but the Discovery is not bad at all and I wouldn't have a complaint. If Arkin had never existed, I would think these were like the best turrets in the world as far as just the feel goes. I, I think they're as good as anything else on the market with feel. They're just not as loud and they're not quite as tactile but there's no mushiness. Like if I try to, 
if I try to get a little slop in the turrets, I really don't think there's, there's almost nothing, almost nothing as far as slop in my particular turrets of this model that I have right here. And for this one, yeah, there's almost no slop at all. And again, at budget prices, these are affordable optics. It's impressive to see turrets this good. I've had, I've had optics that were twice the price of these with sloppy turrets. No issues. Both of them zero stops work well. I don't have any issues with that. I will say, I think the discovery zero stop is easier to use for most people. It might be a little more intuitive or easier to remember. I've just noticed, because I've set a lot of people up with scopes and helped them zero them in. I've noticed that this style is 10 times out of 10 easier for people to remember. Now it's on them. They should learn it. It's not that difficult to zero an Arkin. I think it's easy to, arc, to uh, set the zero stop on the Arkins and uh, reset the zero. Some people struggle with it just because they don't exactly know what's going on inside of here. And when you take this cap off, you see what you need to do. It's right there in front of you. In this one, there's some stuff going on underneath the cap. And I think people who are really, really new to optics, at least, they get a little confused with that. And uh, I, I guess I don't blame them. If they're new, they don't know what they're, they don't know what they're doing exactly. I just think this model of Arkin should probably go this direction in the future because this is just a more simple model. And I, I know I just saw a couple other optics companies uh, produce some stuff for, well, at least it's revealed at SHOT Show. And really simple zero stops are in. Uh, this isn't a bad model. It's not going to fail you, I don't think. And if you use it right, you won't strip out the Allens. Um, but as far as keep it simple, stupid, I think uh, Discovery probably has a preferred way of uh, setting the zero stop and it's reliable in both of them. So neither of them are bad. It's just my preference happens to be a little bit more towards the discovery for that reason, and I have no issues with it. As far as travel goes now, this one, this has uh, advertised 32 mils of travel, and it's right in there. It's right in 32. It's slightly up. I think it's like 32.3 mils of functional travel where the reticle is still moving and you're not damaging your scope by cranking on it. I get about 32.3. Uh, maybe some other models, it's slightly different. I'm not sure how that works in calibrating those or setting that. But 32.3, it's really close to the advertised amount. And we'll call 32 good. Maybe you should just not go beyond that. Most people would say don't go within 10% uh, of the extremes of the bottom or the top of your travel. And I've, I've heard another person say don't go within 25% of the top or bottom of your travel. For me, I, I, I max out my optics all the time and I haven't noticed any issues, and I do shoot kind of a lot. This one, though, has 37 mils. Now, this one's only advertised as 15 mils of internal travel for elevation, and I was kind of bummed out when I read that online, but then I got it, and very quickly I realized, like I said before, there's a bunch. There's a bunch of travel in there. I could put this in infinity rings and use up all that internal elevation and shoot these 22s really, really far, but I'm actually content just using the 55 MOA rail and the 50 MOA rail. I get as much as I care to. I like to shoot beyond 600 yards by a little bit with 22s on windless days. It's fun to do, but it's not super consistent. Uh, I'd rather just shoot at 500 yards. 500 yards can be pretty consistent if the temperature is good and it's not too windy. Otherwise, even a little closer, you know, like quarter mile, around, right around 400 yards, uh, 22s can be really, really consistent, and both of these are going to get you to at least 500 yards with uh, these types of rails. No issues at all. 32 mils is plenty. A few years ago, 32 mils was insane travel. Now looking at 37 mils of internal travel from my experience with this optic, uh, if they're all like this one, that's awesome. 37 mils is really good. And again, I've had no return to zero issues with either of them. I've had no dialing correction issues. My data is actually the same. I've tested these out. I know my data for these rifles when I shoot beyond 500 yards. It's pretty consistent as long as I get the temperature right uh, with the particular ammo. And the data just is the same in both optics. And so I trust them. I feel like they're, I feel like they're tracking true. I have a, a, a pal who I was talking to on Discord, and he was saying he wasn't so sure about tracking right now, and he's, he's not particularly a fan of either of these. Um, I don't believe he, 
I don't believe he's produced his content yet. I'm gonna let him do his own thing, but I think he has videos coming out on them. But my take is I actually think pretty, pretty well, pretty highly of both of these optics, especially at the value. I think it's a great value. I think it's getting a lot of people into shooting, especially providing that kind of internal travel. Uh, I'm gonna flip these around for a second and we'll talk about parallax and illumination. All right, moving on to uh, the illumination, which is the most exterior dial on both of these right here. I do have kind of a, a pretty definitive opinion on parallax, or sorry, the uh, illumination. I have a pretty definitive opinion on this. They both use the same kind of battery. My opinion is on this particular Arkin, compared to even my other Arkins, the illumination moves and it's fine. It functions. Um, the brightness is really good, actually. I For any, any early morning or late evening shooting, I don't need light in the day in the reticle. I just don't need it. I never have, not for hunting, not for target practice, really, um, even on black targets. I haven't really needed that. But I'm going to just say that this is a little sluggish. It's a little sluggish. Like, I'm putting some effort into it. It has enough texture. It has enough uh, meat there and the size of the dial that I can grab it. I can move it. And I really don't want to complain about that. That I'm, I'm really tempted to say nothing at all. But I just noticed it's a little sluggish. And it's not the fact that I would have to break it in more. I've, I've actually shot this plenty. I've been using it for a while. I just feel like it's a little sluggish. Now, on the Discovery, if I move over here, again, illumination is good for early morning, late evening. I don't have issues with that but the texture is really aggressive and the dial is slightly bigger and it is a little bit more tactile in my opinion on the Discovery. It has more of a firm start and stop and a little less mush in the feel as it's going. I think, yeah, I think I could just definitively say both of them have six settings, brightness is good. I don't have an issue with the function of how much of the reticle is illuminated. I, I think it works great for that for hunting and target practice. No issues with that. They're pretty even. I just think the actual fluidity of the dial is more tactile and more functional on the Discovery. I think that's probably a better design and feel than the Arkin. But again, I was really tempted to say nothing about the Arkin having any issues. And that's not because of affiliation with Arkin. Uh, I, I do like them, and, and uh, they do send stuff out to the channel. Both of them do. Uh, but I just don't have any bias where I would prop them up. I just feel like it's a really good illumination. It's not bad. And, and comparing things to even a few years ago, this is an awesome, awesome optic. I just think the Discovery has a little bit better of a dial and feel. But as far as what I'm seeing illuminated, they're the same. They're, they're both great, both good even right there. I have no winner in that application. Now moving on to parallax. Again with parallax, I do think I have kind of a conclusive opinion about which one is better. With the Arkin, it goes down to 25 yards and with the Discovery, it goes down to 25 yards. I think in the past I've had some Arkins where it wasn't a true 25 yard parallax. I don't know if that was just calibrated wrong from the factory. Maybe it was just the models I had, but it was closer to like a 28 or a 30 yard parallax. That's my opinion, really seem that way. But this one, uh, it's a true 25 yard parallax for sure. I'm not concerned about that. It really appears to be truly 25 yards. It's nice and smooth. It has the same figures and numbers on there that I'm used to, right up to infinity. And it's, it's a nice, smooth parallax, really smooth. I don't feel like I'm fighting the dial to get it to move even when it's cold. And this is where like, it's a really big deal to me, guys. If I have to fight turrets, or if I have to fight the parallax or the illumination when it's cold out, which it's always cold. Like I said, it's 12 below Fahrenheit right now. Um, and then wind chill on top of that. If I have to fight these dials, it's really frustrating and it can damage optics. If you're fighting dials when it's cold, sometimes you're exerting too much force. And I've seen guys actually pull, pull their turret off, the turret head off. When you abuse it and you go way too hard, and then it's cold, you just start exerting force on areas that don't usually have force. And so I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's going on in the cold. I could be wrong, I definitely could be, but it seems like that's what happens, especially with the mag. With the mag right here, with these cattails, these magnification assists, in the cold, sometimes it can give you extra leverage and you have to be careful about that. But I'll talk about that in a second. So again, really, really smooth, very happy with the Arkin and uh, improved glass, which I'll talk about in a second. 
and this one, it helps me with that parallax compared to the old ones. Now going to the Discovery, it has a bigger dial and it's, it's smooth. It's not unsmooth. I don't feel any unnecessary rests on the way. It has a really great texture because the dial is bigger. Again, it, it leads me to believe anyways, or to perceive that it's easy to move, but it's not as easy as the Arkin. The Arkin is smoother in the dial. And in my opinion, I think the glass is not quite as good in the Discovery as it is in the Arkin. Again, this is the EP5 version of the Arkin. That's an important distinction here. I think this has superior glass to the Discovery. And I really can tell when I'm setting the parallax, let's say I'm, I'm setting them both at uh, 75 yards. So a closer distance, but parallax is a big deal when it's close. You could really miss by a lot. And when I set this one, I can just tell, you know, okay, there's clear, there's unclear, I go back and forth, but I just notice that the clarity of glass in this is not quite up to the caliber where the Arkin is. And there is a price difference here. This can be had for less than this can, usually by about $100. That's a lot, that's a lot of cash. And so again, they're, they're appealing to a certain market, they're reaching a certain group of people, and that might be just one thing you have to decide. Do you need the improved glass? Uh, but the improved glass, it does seem to help me get a more particularly tight parallax setting. And I know that's a little complicated and some people might think I'm misunderstanding because the, the parallax in what it's actually doing, uh, it's not just a focus. There's, there's multiple things happening there. I'm just summarizing the idea because I don't want to have a 20 minute discussion on what's actually happening when you move your parallax dial. I'm just telling you, this one moves more smooth. I think the glass is better and all those things functioning together. I like the Arkin's parallax knob and, and uh, the internals better with that than I do the Discovery. Again, I'll just flip it around though and say I don't even want to complain at all about the Discovery Parallax knob. I don't have any issues with it. One thing to consider for some people though is it may make it hard to see your bubble level if you have a bubble level mounted up here just because this is so large. I mean, if you can just see this, this is way bigger than the Arkin. Way, way bigger. It's huge. People used to buy extenders like this, little wheels, parallax wheels to throw on and make it really big for like field target and air gun competitions. This one, it's just built in, it's really big. It can make it a little hard to see your bubble level if you don't have something with high contrast or something that sits up high enough. So you might wanna mount it up here, but if you mount your bubble level up here, then it takes away real estate for your ring and it also makes it hard to see the numbers. So if you're a numbers guy and you're not doing it the right way, which is just to stay in the glass and turn it back and forth, until the image is sharp and you don't have a reticle wobble, if you don't do it the right way and you're just trying to use numbers as reference points, this bubble level could block that if it's in front. And if it's back here, it needs to be tall enough that you can see it. So it's just a couple things. Again, these are really technical details for most people. And I don't quite have that same type of issue with the Arkin. The Arkin, I've never run into an issue. I actually do have the bubble level mounted in front of the parallax technically, but I can see them both simultaneously. And I, I don't really look at the numbers other than just to get me in the uh, ballpark for where I'm going. And then I use my eye to decide, am I actually uh, correcting parallax error? Now I'm gonna move on to the reticle itself. You can't see that right here. I'm just gonna tell you that there's a really decent reticle in here with a, a small center dot, aiming dot, seems pretty close to the other one. And in fact, maybe I'll just show a graphic real quick for you on the screen right here between the two. And so on your left side right now, you see the Arkin optic. Okay, the Arkin optic has a few more mils of hold over here and a little bit more information in my opinion. Makes good use of that, but it also has better glass and so you can do more with that reticle. But there's still 10 mils of hold over at least with the EDPRS I think it's a really good reticle. I like center dots this size plenty much. It's great for target shooting, I'll tell you that. It's really, really good for target shooting. Small though, and so for some people, if you have trouble with smaller size reticles, that dot is gonna be a little bit too small for you in both of these. For me, I think it's good, and you can't please everybody, so you gotta pick one and go with it. I just prefer more holdover space, and so I lean towards the Arkin reticle. I think the 
VPR mill reticle is really, really good. I like it a lot. And now having improved glass, the reticle itself is just that much better to me because I can use the bottom of the glass without getting uh, as much chromatic aberration or you know just imperfections in the glass that actually kind of miscalculate the numbers or they, they distort the numbers of the reticle and the information there. And you could actually get error in your values, I think, if the glass is not representing the reticle properly. That's the way it was explained to me once. And if I'm wrong, I apologize. Go ahead and correct me in the comments. That's just fine. I'm open to being corrected, but that's the way it was explained to me. And I do see it that way. So the Arkin reticle, I prefer that over the Discovery, but both of them are very, very usable. And remember, the Discovery actually has more internal travel than the Arkin does. So even though the Arkin has more holdover, this one has more internal travel. And so they really kind of balance out in the end. It's not that much of an advantage with the Arkin reticle when you realize how much internal travel the Discovery has, which is kind of cool. Now let's go to glass real quick. Again, the glass is better in the Arkin than it is in the Discovery. That's not something I can show you very well with cameras. It's very hard to do that right, and I, I just can't do it very easily. So I'm going to tell you, I think the, the glass is noticeably better in the Arkin, but I really haven't had issues with this glass, even out at distance. Looking over a great distance, it's not bad. It's not amazing. I mean, you're, you're seeing this optic for sale, let's just say under $500 right now, and sometimes much less than, than 500 bucks. So an optic that's less than $500 that has this many features, you wouldn't expect it to have even Japanese ED glass, but this is an EDPRS advertised optic. I don't know where they're getting their glass from. I don't have a good background for information for that, and so I'm not going to speak to it. I'll let them um, kind of publicize where they're getting stuff and what the quality of their glass is. There's, there's one thing that's kind of tricky for people like me uh, to understand since I'm not really in the industry and I don't know glass very well. Sometimes people can advertise ED um, or ELD glass and an extra low dispersion. And sometimes the terms may not mean the same thing to different groups of people and they might mean it differently and lens coatings. If you ever look into lens coatings, this one, one thing that is just fascinating to me with lens coatings, you know, there's four or five really common treatments of lens coatings that do different things for light. And some might advertise as a coated lens or a, a single layer of coating. And then you have fully multi-coated and fully multi-coated is, is good. That's superior, but they don't always advertise it the same way. And I'm not accusing either of these companies of doing anything wrong with that, but it's just something I'm paying more and more attention to because I realize the way that they're setting up their optics and the glass quality. Um, when you get something that's affordable, some corners have to be cut. And so pay attention to that. That's something to look into. But yeah, at the end of the day, for sure, the Arkin has better glass and I can see better with it. I can get more detail out of it. I think the colors are truer in this uh, EP5 than they are in the EDPRS but I don't think this is unusable. In fact, the highest score I've ever gotten in NRL 22 was with this optic right here. And I've done well with this one. I used this one last month, actually. I did well with this one, but I've, I've scored higher with this than I have any other optic. And we were shooting really small, sometimes quarter inch targets, uh, occasionally shooting out a few hundred yards. I've taken both of them very, very far, and I just don't have issues with it. But I think uh, if I'm looking for optimal performance, and I have these two as my options. I think this has a little bit better glass overall. And if you're on a budget, that might not be a, a big deal to you. You might still say, well, the Discovery is a better optic for me because I can afford it. Because I'm spending more money on your gun or your ammo or tripod or a bipod. And uh, glass performance just won't be an issue for you. If you're somebody who shoots a lot early morning, later at night, I think this is a brighter image. I think the Arkin actually produces a brighter image than the Discovery does. But my guess is the reason that they've gone with a longer tube is it's helping them get color a little bit better than some of their competition that would be the same style of scope. And then uh, some of the trueness of light and the way that chromatic aberration happens with like and, and reflections and, and air of light not getting focused into a certain place. I think keeping this longer, I don't know the scientist who made this, I don't know who worked on this, but I, I bet 
the reason they kept that longer was it just helped them get that into a better focal point rather than a more compact scope, which would have cost them more money to get that correct each time. And I think it's a matter of science. That's, again, information that's been given to me about how optics work and how difficult it is to make tight, compact scopes and get everything true and focused down, dealing with chromatic aberration, um, you know, and especially with lesser quality glass sometimes where it's not shot glass, it's not $4,000 optic kind of glass. It's, it's much more uh, reasonable and accessible to the average guy like me. So I'm leaning towards this one for quality, but I like that one. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm talking a whole lot, so I'm gonna speed it up here, guys. Let's go to the magnification ring. Magnification ring is a little stiff on the 5 to, 5, 5 to 25 EDPRS. I've noticed that in the cold, it's only slightly more stiff than this. It does have this stippling, which it has on everything else, which is really aggressive. If I wasn't using the magnification assist lever here, I could still grab onto this and move it pretty good. I'm not too concerned about that, actually. It's just nice to have this assist on there. I know, though, since it's a little firm already, and when it's cold and it gets a little bit tighter, it still moves, and I can still get to my numbers. I'm, not, I'm really not worried about that I just don't want to crank on it hard and fast because I do feel like I could damage it a little bit. I haven't yet. Nothing's happened and I've shot it in sub-zero temperatures. But I'm just noticing it takes a little more force. As far as which one is smoother, well, the Arcan is smoother. But it's not by much. It's very, very minimal. That's what I'm going to say about the Arcan. Um, it's a little smoother. And maybe I shouldn't say smoother. Maybe I should say it's just slightly looser. Because I do think the tolerances are a little looser in that piece. I don't think it's just a, a fluidity issue. I think it's just looser. But the nice thing is when it's really, really cold, it's still just as pretty much, pretty much just as good with a magnification lever here. And I'm not talking about 20 or 30 below. I'm not talking about putting them in ice. I'm talking about, let's say, around 15 below and warmer. So sub-zero, but still works. Still does good for me. Moving back to the uh, ocular adjustment here, so you can get your reticle nice and tight. This one has a nice grip on it, so you can grab onto it. Huge range of travel, but I move mine all the way to the right. Moves well. I don't have any issues with that at all. Seems like it's a solid piece. I don't have any fears about that loosening up or coming off. Nothing like that. Moving to the Arkin, I'm gonna go ahead and take the cap off here. The Arkin, although it has a texture on it, it's just harder to grab. But the truth is, in my optics, I'm not hoping to be adjusting this a whole lot. Even though they both have a fast focus eyepiece, I don't really want to be adjusting this a whole lot. You know, unless somebody knows what they're doing, it can be kind of frustrating to have to go back and forth with another person on that. So the fast focus, if you're going to borrow the rifle around, if multiple people are going to shoot on one rifle and they all know what they're doing, yeah, that's not too big of a deal. It can very quickly adjust that and get it tight for your eye. For me, I would be just as fine with uh, something that I could lock, a locking diopter. The Arkin doesn't have enough texture on it to make it really, really fast to grab onto. I, it's, it's kind of beveled on the bezel of it. And so my fingers just slip off a little tiny bit. But once I get it cranked, then I can grab the grip that's there and it's no issue. And that is nitpicking, guys. I am being way, way, way nitpicky compared to how I would normally be. Normally, I just make things work and I'm not concerned about it. I really don't have issues with this at all. Both of them are fine. There's no ocular lens issue with either of them. I just know that the Discovery is easier to navigate, to move. Both of them have enough range of travel to get things tight for my eye, and I believe the same for you. So there you have it. I know I bounced around a lot there and it wasn't 100% consistent in objective comparison and I'm not really trying to be. I'm just giving you kind of a basic understanding of how I feel about the two of the optics. If a person is going to go to the comments and say which one is better, uh, you got to understand how bad of a question that is. It's kind of like what part do you want to compare and how do you use the gun and how do you use the optic and where are you shooting, where are you located, what are your needs. There's so many, there's so many questions that are personal to you that you can probably answer pretty quickly and figure it out. So I'm just gonna encourage you to watch this video, maybe watch the individual videos where I review the optics and I give more information. You get to see me actually use them and shoot them with a, you know outdoor conditions, a little bit nicer video footage, honestly. 
But that's what I would suggest doing. Um, watch that. I can't tell you which one is better for you and your application. If you're on a budget, I'm going to tell you this one's more affordable. Do I recommend it? Yes, I do recommend it. If you're not on a budget and you want a better quality glass, there's, there's an objective difference here. This one has better quality glass. If you need to shoot further, there might be an advantage to this one. Depends how you shoot. If you use holdovers or if you like to dial. If you are an early morning, late evening kind of hunter, shooter, target practice guy. Uh, and, and again, the glass is going to be a, a big deal. Trueness of color, brightness of image. You know, that might be something that would push you a little bit more that way. If you know what you're doing, though, you can do so much with either of these scopes. And uh, that's why I just I try not to complain about too much because we're living in a golden era of optics. The fact that both of these could be had for under $600, like well under $600. The fact that both of them can be had for well under $600 just proves and goes to show how fast and rapidly the, re the optics market is improving. I've talked to both of these people, the people who represent these companies, and I'm getting a really good feel for what they're coming out with. They're listening to customers, they're listening to shooters, they're listening to people from different regions around the world, and they're trying really hard to compete with each other across the market. And that's a win for us. That's a win for people who shoot, who are in competition or hunters, because you're getting awesome products. They're putting so much work and math and science into making their products superior. And uh, I'm just going to say that both of these are really good optics. I'm happy with my experience with them so far. One thing that I didn't comment on because I'm not sure yet, and maybe you noticed it, maybe you noticed I, I missed something in there, but I'm just not sure yet, is iBox. I don't know what I want to say yet about iBox or fish, uh, kind of uh, a little bit of fishbowl. Fish, what do they call it? Fishbowl? Fish lens? Man, I can't think today. I've talked so much before this, but that's one issue I did not comment on intentionally. I'm still thinking about it. I'm still comparing the two. That's one thing I can come back and give a follow-up video if I care to in the future. But they're both shootable. Like I said, scored my highest NRL 22 competition score with this, and I, I did well. I did really well. Uh, this optic did not hold me back in that way with eye box issues. I shot it on that competition. I shot it mostly at 15 or less power, I'm sure. A couple stages, I shot it on 25 power. And it didn't stop me, and I didn't think to myself, oh, crap, this thing sucks. I had so much issue with eye box or pickiness or tightness or um, when, I, when I go down to low power, which is less often. I usually stay in the upper half of the power. But when I went down to low power and I was needing lots of field of view, I just didn't have issues with either of them. I think they're both really good, but I'm pretty sure field of view and eye box, when I put those out to test for myself if I put them side by side, I'm sure there's a difference and one is better than the other. I just can't tell you which one is the best for your shooting. Again, if it comes down to um, budget, I think I could lean you toward this one because you can still do a lot with it and I have. I've just I've proven it to myself. You can do a lot with this. And if budget isn't an issue and you're considering a, a, a better, brighter image, you might lean towards the Arkin in that case. But the best thing that you could do is go to the range and ask to see somebody else's. I'm seeing more of these are getting sold and uh, a buddy from up north, if you're in Canada, if you're one of my subscribers from Canada, if you check out Affordable Optics and Reviews, I know he is doing a little bit with these for uh, kind of Canada distribution, it sounds like. He's helping get word out about that. I think there's a review coming on his channel as well. And a few others, like I said, there's one more gun tuber guy who um, he's got more of a critical analysis and he actually is in the industry. He's got a lot more scientific knowledge of what's going on. He'll give his breakdown as well. It'll probably be a lot more harsh than mine, um, but I'm a shooter. I'm a competitive shooter. I'm a hunter and I like them both.